Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the 1954 horror science fiction classic, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, I have Creature from the Black Lagoon both on VHS, and I also have it on this DVD set here called Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Legacy Collection. Now, Creature from the Black Lagoon is directed by Jack Arnold, who also directed a lot of other B-movies from around this time. Like, he directed movies like It Came From Outer Space and Tarantula and The Incredible Shrinkin' Man. Now, I grew up on this movie. I really did. Like, this is a movie that I first saw when I was, like, eight or nine years old, and I remember when I first saw this movie, I just absolutely fell in love with it, and this was really my big introduction into a lot of the Universal monster movies. Like, I saw this movie before I saw movies like the original Frankenstein or the 1931 version of Dracula or the Wolfman. Like, this really was the first of the Universal monster movies that I ever saw. And even before I saw this movie, I already knew who the creature from the Black Lagoon was because this character really had has become a very iconic character in horror and science fiction movies. Now, technically, my first introduction to this character was actually the 1987 film The Monster Squad, which was a tribute to the Universal Monster movies, and... If you consider that a real Creature from the Black Lagoon movie, that was technically the first Creature from the Black Lagoon movie I ever saw, and seeing that movie got me interested in seeing the original Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, the producer of this movie, William Alland, I think I'm saying his last name right, uh, he was a friend of Orson Welles, and apparently during a dinner party during the filming of Citizen Kane, somebody at this dinner party claimed that he heard this legend of a half-human, half-fish, and this guy totally believed this story, and nobody at the party knew how to respond to this guy, but this gave... William Alland the idea to make a movie about a half-human, half-fish creature. Now, the plot of Creature from the Black Lagoon is it begins where this professor is down in the Amazon jungle and he discovers the fossilized arm of some kind of prehistoric creature and he then brings a bunch of other scientists down to the Amazon jungle so they can try and uncover the rest of this fossil and one thing leads to another and they end up in this lagoon called the Black Lagoon, and it turns out that this lagoon is inhabited by a half-human, half-fish-like creature, and this creature is actually a descendant of the animal that they found the fossil of. So, what happens is, once these scientists discover this creature, they try bringing it back to civilization, which, that doesn't work out too well for them. And basically, as they start messing with this creature, the creature just starts messing with them right back, and in the movie, the creature starts to develop a weird fascination with a female scientist named Kay, which, basically, the movie has kind of like a Beauty and the Beast kind of theme to it, and it turns out that this creature is kind of in love with this female scientist. And it turns out that this creature is also extremely intelligent because when they capture it, it manages to escape, and the creature even manages to block the exit to the Black Lagoon, so when they try to escape, they can't. Now, 
I love Creature from the Black Lagoon. As I said earlier in this review, this is a movie that I really grew up on. Like, I used to watch this movie a lot when I was a little kid, so I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie, but I honestly do think this is one of the best B-movies that came out in the 1950s. Like, this is actually a very, very well-made movie, and a very well-acted movie as well. And this was also, as I said before, this really was my big introduction to a lot of the Universal monster movies. And it was also my introduction to a lot of the B-movies that came out in the 1950s. And one thing that I really do like about this movie is really the characters in the movie. Like, this movie actually does have some pretty likable characters, and even the characters who aren't so likable, it's because they're not supposed to be likable. Like, in the movie, there's a character named Mark, played by Richard Denning, who is this very arrogant scientist, and he's not necessarily a villain in the movie, but he is a very antagonistic character, and you realize that he's very arrogant, and he's the one who really does want to capture this creature, and you realize that it's his arrogance that is really leading to a lot of the conflicts that these characters are facing. I also really liked the character of David in the movie, played by Richard Carlson. I thought he was a very likable character, and I also really liked the character of Kay, the female scientist played by Julie Adams. I thought she was a very likable character as well. But honestly, my favorite character in this movie is actually the captain of this boat that they're on, whose name is Lucas, and I really loved that character. I thought he was a very funny character, and he has one of my favorite lines in the movie where, like, it's before they actually actually find out about the creature, and while these scientists are looking for fossils, he says, Ah, this is some crazy fishing. Who eats rocks? And then another scientist goes to him saying, I do. In a matter of speaking, I crack them, and they tell me things. Uh, you know, it's a... He's a very funny character, and I really enjoyed that character in the movie, and honestly, I really liked a lot of these characters, and I think all the characters in the movie are also very well acted as well. Another thing I really love about this movie is really some of the effects in the movie, like for the creature. I actually think the creature in this movie still kind of holds up even today. Like, yes, it's a little dated by today's standards, but still, for its time, I think the creature looked really, really good. And there's actually a scene in the movie, or a couple of scenes in the movie, where you see the creature out of water, and you see its gills actually moving the same way an actual fish's gills would move if it's out of water. And I thought that was cool because they actually tried to make this creature actually look and seem like a real creature. Like, it, it was actually actually kind of realistic. I mean, it's not a realistic movie, obviously, but the way they made the creature look in this movie, the creature honestly looked kind of realistic, at least for its time. Like, I really appreciated how they didn't just use, like, a rubber suit or something. They actually used real effects to actually make this creature legitimately seem like a real creature. So yeah, I highly recommend Creature from the Black Lagoon. If you like a lot of the horror films that came out back during that time, I think you would really enjoy this one because, honestly, I really do think this is one of the best horror films to come out in the 1950s. Now, this movie went on to spawn two sequels, one in 1955 called Revenge of the Creature, and one in 1956 called The Creature Walks Among Us, and the character of the creature from the Black Lagoon, or the Gill Man as he's called, 
really has become a horror movie icon now. Like, he's right up there with characters like the Frankenstein monster and the Wolfman and Dracula and even Godzilla and King Kong. Like, he really is, like, considered to be one of the great, like, movie monsters. And the music from this movie would actually go on to get used in a lot of Universal's later films, and the music from this movie was also used in Universal's American version of King Kong vs. Godzilla. Now, I saw King Kong vs. Godzilla way before I saw this movie, so when I first saw this movie, I was like, hey, that's the music from King Kong vs. Godzilla. Now, now, for years they've been trying to make a remake of this movie. Actually, since the 80s they have been trying to make a remake of this film. In fact, in the in the early 80s, John Landis, the guy who directed movies like An American Werewolf in London and Animal House, he was actually going to direct a remake of this movie. And then in the 90s, John Carpenter was supposed to direct a remake, and even Garamel Del Toro was supposed to direct a remake at one point, but for some reason, a remake still hasn't happened, but in the in the 1980s, there was a film called The Monster Squad, which was a tribute to a lot of the Universal monster movies, and in that movie, the creature from the Black Lagoon was one of the villains. 